Mr. Subramaniam Ramadurai, CBE, was advisor to the Prime Minister of India in the National Council on Skin Development. He is chair of the governing board of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Guwahati. He was earlier MD of Tata Consultancy Services, transforming it into one of the world's largest IT companies. Sir, I'm going to invite you to please deliver the special address to us. Shri K.G. Alphonse, Member of Parliament, and former Minister of State for Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. Mr. Moses Manoharan, Chairman, Global Dialogue Forum. Mr. Baiju Ravindran, Founder and Chairman of Bajus. Ms. Nisha Ramdas, Managing Editor, Global Dialogue Review. Air First Marshal, Dr. Rudy Gultom, Lieutenant General Arun Kumar Sani, Director General of the Indian National Association for the Club of Rome. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Let me start by thanking the Global Dialogue Forum and the Club of Rome, India, for organizing this conference. And as the Chairman of the Club of Rome, India, I warmly welcome you to this conference as we begin deliberation on an issue or a subject of great significance. As we all know, the Indian education system is poised to transform significantly over the next decade or so. This is on the back of the digital revolution that is transforming virtually every sector around us whether it's banking, whether it's financial services, manufacturing, healthcare, education, skills, or public service delivery. That's the kind of impact this is going to be the next revolution. Now, when you look at the education, just to set the context, education across the world continues to fall short of the aspirations, which we all have for it. Despite the significant expansion of access, multiple exclusions, whether because of the economic disparity, gender discrimination, disability, or digital divide continue to deny hundreds of millions of children, youth and adults of their fundamental right to quality education. The formal learning does not meet the needs and aspirations of the learners or the employers. Lack of access is compounded by a crisis of relevance, and poor quality instruction hinders creativity and curiosity, and that's what we are trying to address. Patterns of student disengagement and dropout at all levels of education definitely point out the inadequacies of the current model to provide a meaningful learning and a sense of purpose for our children and the youth. Increasingly, those accessing education are neither prepared for the challenges of the present nor those of the future. These collective failures call for a new shared vision and renewed principles and commitments that can frame and guide our actions in the education space. So the newly formulated National Education Policy 2020 is absolutely a welcome step in the right direction, signaling a new normal in education with its pivotal focus on certain aspects like critical thinking, experiential learning, interactive classrooms, integrated pedagogy, and absolutely competency-based education. I see NEP 2020 as a bold effort to provide the framework for sweeping changes in the whole of the education system, keeping in the most critical tenets of access, equity, infrastructure, governance, and learning. The National Education, Le Education Technology Forum proposed in the NEP will provide the necessary thrust to the deployment and use of technology. As with every other policy, the real test of NEP 2020 will be in its transition 
from policy to action, where both scale and quality will have to go hand in hand, keeping the timelines for implementation in mind. For India, you all know the scale is enormous. We have to educate and skill over 260 million children in our 1.5 million schools and over 30 million undergraduate and postgraduate students in nearly 40,000 colleges and universities. I think the quality of education further requires equal attention. The annual status of education report, ASER, as it is called, also reflects our challenges. It's clear that the transformation of education or vocational education will surely not come from traditional approaches like building more institutions alone. Rather, we must do things differently by leveraging technology and its rapid adoption in a time-bound manner as we move towards realizing our demographic dividend and advantage that we will have until 2050 before the population starts aging. Now, the digital transformation is creating an unprecedented opportunity for innovation across all sectors, like I mentioned, with total reinvention of products, services, and experiences. History has shown us that when new technology comes forth, a developing country with relevant capabilities can leap forward. Japan, as an example, did this with automobiles and consumer electronics. Undoubtedly, India has an advantage this time as we are on the cusp of digital transformation in all spheres of our society and economy, and education is absolutely no exception. Now, it is imperative to develop indigenous digital platforms and cutting edge technologies and ensure its equitable, equitable distribution so that no one is left behind in a digital world. India is the first country in the world to have created public digital infrastructure or what we call as the India stack to drive the digital inclusion, which holds an enormous potential to disrupt the education sector after disrupting the identity and payments. The idea is not to replace what the private sector does, but to empower the private sector innovators to use these building blocks to create new value out of it, driving affordability and accessibility of products and services while ensuring personal data protection and privacy. The Indian entrepreneurs have leveraged these platforms as elevated runways to take off faster with their ideas and capabilities. Such a model where the private players and startups innovators built innovative solutions for learners, teachers, and academic institutions on top of the open APIs that the government builds and shares, this holds a great promise for the future of India's education. Now, the edtech startup community is another stakeholder that is significantly adding significant value to the learning ecosystem in the country in the recent years. Pandemic accelerated edtech's ascent. However, both accessibility due to poor digital infrastructure and affordability, specifically for lower and lower middle income households, have been limiting its reach. As edtech starts up, startups innovate and reposition themselves, we have a critical role to play in transforming the education in India. On the adoption of digital learning platforms, the Government of India is already promoting online learning through initiatives like the SWAYAM, which is the study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds, Diksha, e Patsala, NIOS, the National Institute of Open Schooling, PME Vidya, and several others, Further, with the establishment of the digital university as announced in the union budget this year, the way for rapid digital adoption in the education sector will be paved. As we go along in our digital journey, a number of cutting edge and emerging technologies will surface to improve the learning experiences. With the adoption of technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and Web 3.0, robotics, and even blockchain, the edtech sector will constantly increase efficiency and create an impact across the educational landscape. Now, when you look at the Apple's ARKIT platform, which is an incredible leap towards immersive learning, it helps teachers create AR experiences in which students explore 3D models of human body, 
It is advanced detection feature. They can see a computer-generated detailed simulation of human anatomy. They can also manually trigger motions between the different parts of the human body in a virtual space. Not only does this enable learners to visualize and design different scenarios, but it also improves their manual dexterity, ensuring a higher level of engagement and motivation. Just talking about what we did in TCS in 2006, we started a program called Ignite, which is an innovative learning program with three specific objectives we put, to, for, put together for ourselves in the year 2006 to ensure inclusive growth by hiring smart science graduates from all sections and corners of the society. Inclusiveness was the first one. This was founded in our deep belief that talent is not the exclusive preserve of any social class, caste, or creed. Number two, to ensure the best and next practice in learning, skilling, and ultimately, the total transformation of individuals. And third, to promote much needed technological and pedagogical innovation for skilling India's vast untapped demographic dividend. So we put together a small but creative team of multidisciplinary professionals, including a film editor, foreign language expert, a logician, and artist, in addition to the usual engineers and computer scientists. The team was tasked to be up and running in exactly 90 days. In order to achieve this ambitious goal, the team was instructed to be digital from day one, end to end digital from day one. At that time, most of the recruitment which we did in the organization were with uh, paper and pencil tests. And the Ignite team conceptualized, developed, and deployed a massively scalable digital examination system and tested in remote areas of the country in Upper Assam to the high ranges of Kerala. This patented solution now powers the world's largest digital assessment business. In addition to being an eco-friendly solution, the digital solution has largely eliminated a lot of pilferages or corruption in high-stake assessment. The second one was with um, some English, since English was not the primary language of most of the trainees attending this unique program, we also put together systems in digitally captured lectures and tutorials, enabling our young employees to learn anywhere at any time. As a consequence, we unleashed a tremendous and sustained wave of peer-to-peer -peer learning that essentially enabled a great level of collaboration and cooperation. I think the computer or the digital medium played a very important role in accelerating this whole thing. And uh, the digitization automation of administrative paperwork and record keeping also liberated the small team at Ignite and enabled them to focus on creation of innovation pipeline. Now to date, we have almost done 15,000 trainees who were put through an innovation incubator opening an everlasting stream of innovations which continues. I think using the India Rural Broadband Initiative, which had begun then, the team built a virtual reality version of Ignite and allowed trainees in waiting to begin their learning even before they set foot, set foot into the organization. And based on this success, we reached out upstream in the ecosystem to launch Open Ignite in over 13,000 science colleges from Kohima to Cargill and Port Blair to Pithogar. We also leverage emerging technologies like augmented reality to attract an incredibly diverse talent pool. Every single trainee who joined Ignite became a roving brand ambassador for himself or herself using technology. So each trainee learned to make an augmented reality poster starring, starring themselves and mailed it to the to their colleges and friends. So when the juniors pointed their phone at the poster, the trainee would come alive and share their experiences at TCS Ignite. In 2010, it felt like an enhanced, enchanted experience. Now, when I focused on the skill development initiative at the national level, it was very clear that there were not just enough qualified instructors to teach hard to learn skills such as welding. I challenge the team in TCS to build a world-class welding simulator that will work anywhere in the country. 
and the team responded to the challenge by conceptualizing a novel welding simulator, building it, testing multiple versions rapidly, and deploying it in the field across the country. Popularly, this was called Velu the Welder. This high fidelity simulator was made available. More importantly, the price point was 2.5 lakhs per unit, along with original multimedia content. Imported simulators cost an order of magnitude more and did not meet the new performance benchmarks, such as the welder which we built or the welder simulator which we built. Conceptualizing and building this novel welding simulator required a set of very diverse skills such as filmmaking, sound, and video editing pedagogy. The additional inputs came from haptics, mechanical, and electronic skills in addition to core competencies, which is in the software engineering. I think the early success of this made us do simulators with four degrees of freedom motion platforms, masonry simulator, diamond polishing simulator, drone simulators, and even an endoscopy simulator. I think the team became an ardent believer in the value of simulators for skill development. When a novice forest officer lost one of our early drones in the jungles of Kaziranga, the team had built and deployed drones to help a large organic tea estate better deal with pest attacks on the tea estate. So the numerous applications that were done, including looking at combating the poaching of one of our one-horned Indian rhinos using the drones that we built. I think the value of high tech in combating poaching under very difficult ground conditions, we also demonstrated low cost precision farming as well as a Brigital where software defined handloom and the weavers could use the technology in a big way and directly relate to the markets outside the country from the weaver to the market rather than any intermediary. So I think these are some examples which I wanted to definitely share and the power of technology and power of creativity and the power of inclusiveness, which these children were first generation children, they would have never experienced, the families would have never experienced. And the graduation ceremony, we brought the parents of these, whether they were masons, coolies, welders, bricklayers, whatever, or farmers, and they saw the pride in their children, more importantly, the diverse, gender diversity also. Now, what I want to say is technology should be seen as a means to an end instead of an end in itself. There is a danger in providing digital infrastructure without a plan on how it is to be deployed. Technology cannot substitute schools or replace teachers. It's not teachers or facilitators versus technology. The solution is in teachers and technology. In fact, technology solutions are impactful only when embraced and effectively leveraged by teachers. So the moot question is, how can we ensure equity and create a level playing field for every learner, irrespective of the socioeconomic background? Special attention must be paid to address the digital divide. And there is a hardware, hard and soft infrastructure gap. Hard includes the devices, electricity, telecom, servers, data centers, while soft includes digital platforms, content, legal, and policy measures across value chains. A developing country such as India needs these, and the solution could lie in the public platformization of services and the development and integration of open source education software. Now, as we or in the early stages of the 5G rollout across the country, we have an opportunity to bridge the digital divide and help every Indian realize his or her own potential in a digital world. And this will be a very, very successful rollout for the nation. I think lifelong learning, I don't have to stress. I mean, every single individual pursuit for betterment of the self and the society on a digital medium makes it possible content is for everyone to see and the plenty of content that is available is another acceleration which we are witnessing. And the ability of learners to make informed choices about their own learning pathways will be a defining parameter in their career growth. 
the online learning ecosystem that offers anytime, anywhere self-paced learning to acquire new and industry relevant skills holds the key to sustainable learning cycle. I think none of us are shy of learning anything and none of us are shy of adopting to this medium. And we have seen our children, grandchildren acquire these irrespective of which part of the country, which part of the society or strata of society they belong to. We have a lot to learn from the younger people. And it's a collective learning, a collaborative learning, rather than the traditional models which we are used to. But in conclusion, all I want to say is the pace of change is so enormous, and how you absorb this at the rapid pace that is hitting us is the challenge. I think uh, technology feeds on itself, feeds on itself, technology makes more technology possible, as Alvin Toffler said. The illiterates of the future are not those that cannot read or write, those that, who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn technology. So the education sector must passionately embrace technology in every conceivable manner. Otherwise, the mission of educating hundreds of millions of students will continue to remain a dream. On our mission to achieve our goals on education, conferences like these are extremely important as it brings together leaders, academicians, and practitioners to deliberate on some of the key subjects concerning education today. And I'm sure by the end of this conference, we'll have a number of implementable suggestions to share with key stakeholders and press for the timely implementation of those. So I wish you all a great success for the conference. Thank you. Jai Hind. All the best.